I don't know about you, but I've heard about Tilt and Magic, and I think we're getting a taste of it right now. Yeah, I've been here for, you, here for a few times when it's looked like this, but when it's tournament time, oh my goodness. It's the 50th anniversary this year for Iowa State's home for men's and women's basketball. And for the women, top five nationally in attendance the last 13 seasons. They are ready to go, ready to cheer on their Cyclones who have earned themselves a chance to play at home here in this NCAA tournament. Iowa State in white, UTA in blue. Looking for their first ever NCAA tournament win. This is just the third ever appearance for the program in the big games. Lady Mavs trying to go inside. It dribbles out of bounds. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Well, UTA is not going to uh, look like Iowa State offensively. They're going to be a big, huge contrast. They are going to attack the paint. Jacobs plays primarily inside, and their guards attack. Jacobs setting Just the like that. Taryn Milton trying to work off of it. The putback. No points that possession. And here comes Iowa State. Starting lineup sent a quick two points. You don't need long to find out who and where Ashley Jones is. Capital One starting lineups for the Cyclones. Nymere Du, Emily Ryan, fantastic sophomore point guard. A three on this end. Woo, we're just trying to keep up. Shia Smith with the three as you take a look at the That's starting five. That's her first made three of the entire season. No time like the present. Add a little help there. Can't all be Star Jacobs, number four in blue, who leads this UTA team in just about every category. Lexi Donarski, great on both ends of the floor, the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Five on the shot clock. Emily Ryan will take the three. This Iowa State team works the glass. Morgan Kane with a putback for two. When you look at Iowa State, you don't think of them as a great offensive rebounding team. They're a lot of the same size, mid-sized players. They shoot a lot of threes, but they do, they're, they're sneaky on the offensive glass because you don't block them out well, they're gonna make you pay. Shia Smith hitting that first three of the season. Now wrapping around, putting off the glass and in. She has all five for UTA so far. I would say UTA has come out very poised in their first couple of possessions. Patient, looking for what they want to get. Ashley Jones off in the three-point attempt. You'll see quite a few of those from this Iowa State team tonight. Set a school record, 333 made threes on the season. Most in program history, most in the Big 12 in a single season, and that's a walk. Let's get a couple of your keys to this game, Coach. Well, we saw one of them in a, in a form right there. You know, you have Arlington, uh, you know, they're trying to limit Iowa State's easy threes, as you've just talked about, and they want to attack the paint aggressively like they did there. Iowa State, they got to crowd the paint defensively, take that away, and dictate the pace of the game by moving the ball. The drive off the glass and in from Donarski. Because of their three-point shooting, people have to honor it. They get driving lanes because they space the floor so well and you have to get up on shooters. You'll see Iowa State right here on the defensive end go under on a lot of pick and roll screens at the top of the floor, daring uh, UTA to shoot the outside shot. You'll see a crowd around Jacobs the whole game. Four defenders in the paint right there. Nymere Du, number one, the transfer from Butler was there, as well as Beatrice Jordao. So some size there for Iowa State and Jordao coming into the game. Three up and short, but the rebound. And Jones is fouled. She literally ran from the three-point line to get the offensive board. Here's a unique thing you'll see with Iowa State. Very rarely do they ever put anybody on the lane while they're shooting free throws. They know they're a great free throw shooting team. They shoot over 80%. They just get back and get ready to play defense while they're shooting free throws. That's an anomaly right there with her missing. 
Well, Jones has made more free throws in her career than any other player in Iowa State history. You mentioned it. She's her all-time leading scorer. She's helped her cause from the free throw line and a very I don't know off. if I've ever seen that from her. 87% free throw shooter, missing them both. Yeah. Well, our officials need a moment here. Brian Hall, Brian Burnett, Rochelle Bennett, as there is a clock, shot clock issue for our officials to look at. I still don't know that they've fixed it yet. There we go, 28 on the shot clock. Taryn Milton, 5'9", senior, gets the ball back for UTA. Both Milton and Farrell, very good at taking care of the basketball. Here's Katie, big cat Farrell. UTA moving it around quickly. Claire Chastain will take the three. Offensive rebound as Smith skies for it. Tata Smith not phased by this game. She's not got all. all seven points. Steal on this end of the floor. Jacobs looking to make her mark on this game. Star Jacobs has it blocked with a foul. I'm guessing they're calling the foul with the body because she looked like she got it clean up top. It was against Jordao, the transfer from USF. Great steal here, circling the post by Jacobs. Takes it the length of the floor. Makes her first free throw. Sunbelt Player of the Year, the MVP of the Sunbelt Tournament. The first player in program history to average more than 20 points per game for the season. She's at 21.1 coming into this one. That's an open look for Maggie Espinilla McGraw. Jones got the rebound. There's another offensive rebound by Jordao, swarmed by the Lady Mavs. Chastain got about the three, goes in a little closer. Well, in the previous possession, uh, UTA lucked out because Iowa State had subbed and nobody accounted for the substitution. They didn't talk it out. Iowa State 0 for 4 from 3 to start this game. Nice spin move from Jones. So Ashley Jones probably does that 15 times a game. She gets the ball in the free throw line area and backs down with her basket the bas back to the basket and spins to until she gets leverage. Defense we'll see it a lot. Held its ground on this end of the floor as Star Jones <laughs> couldn't finish. Farrell the rebound. Well, things not starting the way the Cyclones had planned. It's a one-point lead for UTA, but Iowa State missing on its three-point attempts. They are second in the nation in both three-pointers made and three-point percentage. The Iowa State coaching staff was not happy about the other possession. They thought there was a push-off on the rebound. Terry Milton still... got her own rebound. Milton, a senior, over to Jones, walked. She's a bit frustrated to start this game. Yeah, you've got a travel call. She's seen a crowded defense. Ashley Jones is just backing people down. She does it every night, and somehow she gets away with it. A little spin and then use the glass. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Iowa State back in the NCAA tournament for the 20th time in program history, and they have earned the right with that three seed to host here in Hilton Coliseum and trying to make a deep run for their longtime head coach, Bill Finley, and take advantage of this great atmosphere they have here on their home floor. They really do. Uh, we hyped all their threes, and now they've gone 0 for 5 to start. Somehow I feel like they got one coming soon. Well, they've made one in literally every game that they have ever played in Finley's 27 years, so I'm feeling pretty confident at least one's going to fall at some point. It's a long think, I think streak. he would like one to happen really quickly. <laughs> Sooner rather than later, right? 800... 60 straight games it would be if they make one, but that's a two-point that falls for UTA. Good start for the Lady Mavs. 
Milton got kind of to her sweet spot at the foul line there. Donarski, just a sophomore, but the play of both Donarski and Ryan, both sophomores, have been so huge for this Iowa State team this season as UTA commits the foul. Well, that play by Donarski is actually a, basically a carbon copy of what Ashley Jones does. They've all started to kind of adopt that thing. The younger players are getting the ball at the top of the key of the foul line and turning their back to the defender and working their way down and see if, and if somebody comes to help, they kick it out for a three. Donarski well-schooled from a young age. Four points in the game from La Crosse, Wisconsin. Played for her dad at Aquinas High School and longtime connections there with this Iowa State program. She actually committed as an eighth grader, knew where she wanted to be. Chastain, no. Rebound to Aubrey Jones, younger sister of Ashley. Five Jones girls in that family. And they can all ball. And the family would say maybe Aubrey is the best pure shooter of the group. just a sophomore. Chastain, tough drive and finish. And she was looking for a foul too. She got a little bump going to the rim. Well, the other thing we talked about was Star Jacobs, and it's really been everybody else so far for UTA, giving Lady Mavs the lead by three. I think when you get into this situation and you know your best player is going to see a lot of attention, I'm sure that UTA and Sharika Wright have talked about, hey, the rest of you have got to you know, take up the slack. You know there's going to be help in the lane. You know, get yourself to your good driving areas. Know that they're going to stay attached to Star. You might get some good opportunities going to the basket. Morgan Kane, 6'3", Redshirt Jr. for the Cyclones. Getting an offensive foul on that last play. She goes back to the bench. This is their form of the Princeton offense that they're running this time down. Side to side movement, cutters off the high post. Chastain, back to back buckets. Five points, largest lead of the game so far for UT Arlington. The drive from Jones, give me one more. It's funny, when you look at Iowa State, everybody kind of assumes that all the Iowa State players play on the perimeter, but Ashley Jones is as good a driver as she is a good perimeter player. She takes it to the basket, strong going to her right hand, draws contact. So let's see if the best free throw shooter on this Iowa State team, one of the best in program history, can make it. She doesn't. 0 for 3 from the line. Long on all three of her shots. Odd for the All-American for sure. Cheryl Miller award winner last year. And AP second team All-American this year. Inside the Mavs go. No problem for Deja Benjamin off the bench. They're just going right at people inside. Jones. Tough finish that time, couldn't get it over Star Jacobs. Farrell. Great run. Farrell waited for her all the way down, saw her coming, saw she had a step on Jones running back. And now Jacobs has her first field goal of the game. Five different players have scored for the Lady Mavs. The pick, the roll, the basket. Nice high-low pass. Got a switch, took advantage of it. UTA has made their last four shots in the game, trying to take a lead into the second quarter. Great start for the team from the Sun Belt. Jacobs blocked by Du. And once again, when she turned the face to go, there were three defenders sitting between her and the basket. Length on defense is a great cure-all. Good timing, good length. Jacobs, her time to go, no. 
Askew pass it off. Good idea. Benjamin for three. I mean, right now, UTA has basically abandoned the post up uh, for Star Jacobs and let her be the distributor back out to shooters. They're shooting over 50% in this first quarter. The block. And that possession, an empty one as Donarski comes up empty. And what a start for UT Arlington. This is a great transition play. Um, Farrell's got the ball in transition. She sees Jacobs running late. Jones can't get there. Nice high pass where she's the only, star is the only one that can reach it. And then a nice kick out, knock it down. up here in Ames, the UTA Lady Mavs in the lead after our first quarter. We've got a couple of team mottos to share with you. Yeah, so Sharika Wright at, at UT Arlington talks to her players about two feet in. That means when you step on the court and your two feet are inside those lines, there's got to be no distractions. This is all you're thinking about. You're, you're focused on your teammates and your coaches and what you have to do. And for Bill Finley at Iowa State, if you know Iowa State, you've heard him say this. Embrace who you are and don't apologize for what you're not. He knows his team, not as big and physical as some others that they'll face, but they know what they're really good at. And when they go into Ashley Jones, they're really good. I mean, they know where the mismatches are. They know how to get each player to their strengths. They design players, uh, plays for each player based on their strengths. Hot start for UTA, shooting 53% in the first quarter, trying to get that to continue. Star Jacobs, their star, now with six points in the game. That's a hard shot right there because the defender was square between her and the rim, and she just muscled it up. And Jacobs, a player out of Dallas, Texas, played at Duncanville High School. A lot of people know that name. And then went to Houston, wound up not playing there, went to a junior college. And just brings a ton of toughness and competitiveness to this UTA team. There's a foul on this play. That's a needless foul. You, you might have had a chance to block it, but the follow through and the swing down is what gets you the foul call. You know, stay out of foul trouble. It's Cameron Hawkins, a senior out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, off the bench for Sharika Wright. It's Emily Ryan on the free throw line. First one is good. NCAA Men's Basketball Championship first round continues tonight on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. For more information on tournament game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. That's a little more like it for Iowa State at the free throw line. Yeah, I mean, you, you have a team that has shot an incredible percentage all year. They're one of the better free throw shooting teams in the country. Yeah, 82.6%. That ranks second in the NCAA. But Taryn Milton and UTA undaunted. They, they're just playing. They made seven of their last eight. Got to finish that one. That was such a good look. Benjamin has knocked down a three. Also is a two-pointer in this game. Goes back out for Hawkins. How about another? Well. They average four threes made <laughs> per game. They're at three already. And they've only missed once. Three of four from three-point line. Playing a little of the Cyclones game against them. Jones. And she's tough to stop, but UTA does a good job, at least initially. You have to stick with her, though. She just sticks with it. I mean, you know, when you get nine off, nine rebounds a game, a couple of them are usually on the offensive end, and she just stays with the play. Ten points in the game for Jones. Tough take by Jacob. She is fouled. She's so athletic growing at the basket that she can go sideways and create different kinds of shots. Um, can't bail her out with plays like that. If she's going to take tough shots and it goes in, you know, shake her hand basically and run back, um, but don't bail her out on fouls. Jacobs at the free throw line, which has been there a lot this season. 
That would be the one of the areas of the game, though, she could improve a lot in. She's only a 63% free throw shooter. You know, to, to, for her to step up her game, she's going to have to learn to be above 75% to be a great player uh, offensively. Well, remember the word that Shrika Wright first used. She's just still raw. Still yep. really raw as a player. With a ton of potential defending Jones on this play. Thought she got all ball and said it's a foul call. That'll be her second. She's not happy about it, but it's interesting. The coaching staff on uh, UTA sideline uh, has, has stayed fairly calm about all the calls. Uh, and there's been a few against them. Jones, 0 for 3 in the game from the free throw line. Now gets one to go in. Second try, though. Deficit still eight. It's funny how some players who are great free throw shooters just have nights where it just doesn't feel right to them. The ball doesn't feel right in your hand. Drive by Milton around and out. This Iowa State team has been looking forward to a chance for redemption in the NCAA tournament, but Jones lifted her head, got her pocket picked, and then I'm not sure what exactly. The officials are talking to Sharika Wright, who cannot believe a whistle was blown. Maybe well, step out of bounds? But they're pointing the other way. I don't know whether there was an inadvertent whistle. Maybe. Or maybe the Iowa State player was standing out of bounds. I, I did, this is this is crazy. Um, so they knocked the ball loose. It's headed to the sideline. Nothing there. I, I have no idea unless it was an inadvertent whistle by an official behind the play that we couldn't hear or see. Yep, that is it. That is confirmed. That is what it was. So an unfortunate stoppage in play there for the fast break for UTA. Though Jacobs. Missing. Farrell. Good turnaround. Too strong. And then Ryan, the point guard who's always talking. Constant soundtrack for this Iowa State team trying to set up her teammates. Tanarski way off. This does not look like the Iowa State team these Cyclones fans have seen most of the season and that we saw knocking down all kinds of shots at shoot around. UTA, speaking of knocking down shots. Great way to get a look at a three is throw it inside, draw the defense. Right now, if I'm Iowa State, I don't know if I need to help on that post up. So it wasn't Star Jacobs in the post that time. Jacobs on the bench at the moment with two fouls. Jones, tough, trying to take it in herself, does manage to get it back. Two players around her, all kinds of contact, no whistle. Donarski, no. The drought from three continues for one of the nation's best three-point shooting teams. The Cyclones 0 for 7 down double digits. I'm not sure how, as an official, you could even it, it decide who fouled on this play. There was so much contact initiated by both players. Well, they decided upon Claire Chastain for UTA, her second. Do on the inbounds gets her own rebound. That time it's good. Half the battle sometimes is just sticking with plays. Do did that that time. Crowd trying to get this Iowa State defense to rise up a little bit here. Get a stop. As this has been hard to come by. Would you get it though? Jones goes to her younger sister Aubrey. And sometimes you need the glass to help you out on a tough shooting night, but they got a rebound and foul on Dew, I believe. Man, she looks hurt. She after might have hurt play. herself. She had a rough day in practice yesterday. Collided with one of the male practice players. Has a bit of a bandage above her eyebrow, but got checked out. She was fine. Well, here's the battle on the boards. I don't know if they get tangled. They get arms tangled there. Yeah, she gets her arm tangled. It's a foul on Dew. I mean, she's over the back, but I think she kind of pops her shoulder a little bit on the play. Yeah, she took the worst of it and got called for the foul. J 
Jacobs back in the game. Drive by Benjamin, but a foul. Nothing much going the way of the Cyclones in this one so far tonight. Well, if you want a good look at a three, throw it inside, get the defense to drop in, throw it back out. Nice pass to the corner, knock down three. Briggs, Monica McNutt, Andrea Carter will get you covered on all the action from first round games today in the NCAA Women's Tournament at the half. Well, you got some ner nervous Iowa State fans right now because this is not the start they expected. Got a win for their Iowa State men earlier tonight in a close game. Now would like to see their women do the same, but they've got to make up an 11 point deficit at the moment. Largest of the game ties the largest of the game for UT Arlington. Drive left-handed, Lane is good from Ryan. The play was set up to try to get Ashley Jones a three behind the play, but she was well covered and Ryan kept going and laid it in. Six different players have scored for UTA. Cyclone's got a hand on that pass. This is the only one who's played who hasn't. Well, check her off the list. Big Cat adds a three. We now have seven scores for UTA. Just an incredible outside shooting performance for a team that doesn't do that very often. Five of six from three for UTA, and they have their biggest lead, or they did. Zdarsky with the bucket and the foul. Well, she just gets an open lane against a, a player who got caught up in the wash and just tacks the basket, an unnecessary foul. You get beat like that, don't, don't bail him out with a foul. He's Milton's first foul. Jacobs back in the game. Leading scorer all season for UTA as Janarski calmly drains the free throw. Six points in the game for the sophomore. But her team, the three seed, on their home floor, trailing the champs out of the Sun Belt. Jacobs. No. What do you do when you feel like things just aren't clicking? Try to get back on track. Well, if you're used to your good habits and you know you make shots, you've got to think that you'll eventually knock those down. That was a tough pass to try to make inside for Jones. Thing is, you got to get a good shot first. It's one thing if you miss them, but you got to get more good ones. Jacobs, you're going to say she was nudged there by Morgan King. Her second personal foul. Fourth team foul by the Cyclones. Yeah, if you think about even some of the shots that Ashley Jones has gotten in this game, and she has 11 points, a lot of them have been really tough shots for yeah, her they to have. finish. Yes, they have. Jacobs, speaking of tough shots. She's, she's attempted several tough ones, and we, we, she's just got an ability because of her long reach to get the ball over the defender or under the defender. Now she's 6'2", but you can see that wingspan. Really an asset. A step back is good. Long two for Donarski. If you're Iowa State, I mean, we started to talk about it. You've got to just trust your process, that what you do is the right thing. You've got to just stick with it. Crowd getting loud inside. Hilton hasn't phased the Lady Mavs so far. That was scout and report defense. Go under, make them shoot a mid-range jump shot. Ryan, a little look away, then lost it. And it'll stay with Iowa State. Sharika Wright, Sun Belt Coach of the Year. What an incredible player she was in her collegiate career, especially in the Purdue Athletics Hall of Fame. And now in her first ever head coaching job, this is just her second year. She's got her team believing. She's done a terrific job. Watching her coach of practice yesterday was fun to watch. 
this team is fun. I think you did, it's yeah. just jumped out at us. They've been the loosest group of any of them that have been here in Ames. Ryan, another basket. She's got six, trying to help her team climb back into this one. And they know they're going to get help all night from the crowd. What a feeling. What a gift to have a crowd like this at your back. It's what you play for. It's why you try to earn a home seed. But all night long, UTA has said, bring it on. Four to shoot. Do they even know? The spin. Benjamin misses. Ashley Jones wants a three. There's the first one for the Cyclones. Time out. UTA. Yeah, I think Sharika Wright has to use it or lose it one. She needs to get a good possession here. Crowd making some noise. UTA wants a timeout, trying to hang on to a four point lead. Looking around the league, the country, I should say. You don't want to miss this. Let's see what happened on this break for Stanford and Fran Blady, shall we? Boom! Puts it down. Crowd loves it. Cardinal up big in their game. I mean, come on, that's just fun. That's, a, that's just a just fun play. And, and she's got a pretty good fan right there. I think that new quarterback for the Denver Broncos likes it. Russell Wilson in the crowd, his sister Anna, Anna on the yep. Stanford team. Speaking of the crowd, this crowd probably breathed a huge sigh of relief somewhere in between all of their cheers when Iowa State finally managed to knock down a three. Ashley Jones doing the honors. This team that set a single season program and Big 12 record with 333 three-pointers made this year started this game 0 for 9. Yep, finally. finally. Let's see if it makes a difference now. Four points separating these two teams. A minute to play in the first half. Star Jacobs had it blocked. No, foul was called. Looked like Jordal got all ball, but let's see who they call the foul on. Might have got body, though, on the follow-through. She yeah. might have gone through her. Third personal on Jordal. Here's the drive. Ooh, yeah. yeah, a lot of body. Looks like Jacobs, when she drives, you mentioned the tough angles. I mean, she makes it It's tough on herself sometimes when she gets away with it. It's tough on the defense. Well, nowadays, you, you're trying so hard to avoid getting offensive fouls that you have to learn to go sideways a little bit more. <laughs> so many players run to try to get in front of you and take charges. Two for two on that trip. Getting Jacobs out with her fouls so she doesn't pick up another one here before the half. Yeah, she has two fouls, 10 points in the game to lead a very balanced attack by UT Arlington so far. Iowa State just starting to gain some momentum. Denarski trying to keep it going, drags across. Can't get it though. And patience by Farrell to wait for everybody to get there. You talked about the composure of these guards, Farrell and Milton in particular, for UTA. Basket, no good, foul before. Great position right in the middle of the lane for Smith. Right at the restricted circle, had great position. Going to the line with the bonus. Shia Smith, 5'11", senior out of Idabel, Oklahoma. Transfer from Wichita State. This is her second year with this UTA team. It was the leading scorer last year. That was before Star Jacobs got here. And here, this is how relaxed they are. That point goes around twice, doesn't win, and everybody on the UTA team on the line is all smiling. Like, okay, that was funny. <laughs> they do keep it loose, and it's been to their benefit thus far. Iowa State going to hold it here for the last shot. Put it in. Ashley Jones's hands. I think they're probably just going to let her go one-on-one -on -one to see if uh, the UTA team tries to help off her. 
Anybody. Four spread. Here she goes. Jones with the left short. And left some time on the clock. Maybe one more shot. They do get it off. What a start. What a first half by UT Arlington. One, 35, the 14 seed Lady Mavericks of UTA in the lead. Studio coming your way after the break. And first time that they've been in the NCAA tournament since 2007. They are playing very, very composed. We set up that battle of big time stars. Star Jacobs, aptly named for UTA. 10 points in the first half here. She is with the basketball. And then Ashley Jones is a rebound away from a double-double. Really had to work for her points, 14 of them in the first half to go along with nine rebounds. And Star Jacobs right there, when she missed, she was a little frustrated, thought about going back for the steal. If they miss, they just got to get back and play defense against Iowa State. Let's see how the Cyclones come out. They go to Jones. Remember that this team, which is one of the best in the country at making threes, missed their first nine attempts. A tie up after the rebound. And the Cyclones looking for any little moment to get him fired up. Morgan Kane helping well, to get this possession back. And if you're the underdog here, you can't give a team a second chance. You've got them on their heels. Keep them there. Jones got a look. He gave up an offensive rebound. It became a jump ball. And now they, get, they paid for it. UTA led by as many as a dozen in the first half. They come right back down the floor, though, through Taryn Milton. Good composed answer. As loose as this UT Arlington team has been, I think you've said that word a couple times, their composure has also really been on display in a hostile environment tonight. Jones, boy, she's so good. She's just got different ways to score. You gotta get back and play defense, though. And Taryn Milton not afraid to look up into the crowd. There is a pretty good section, by the way, of UTA fans. She looked right up at them and let them know. And one coming. And they've been a loud group of fans. Uh, you know, they can get drowned out in here, but they've been loud. Milton went right at the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, Lexi Donarski, who committed the foul. Both Milton and Farrell, top five all time in assists in UTA program history. Milton also scores at an average of 12 points per game. Donarski uh, knocks this, it down. This looks like Iowa State now, the last couple of possessions. They've gotten different people involved in the offense and they've knocked down some of their threes. What do you think Bill Fenley was talking about to his team? At halftime. I think he was just trying to get them to settle down, first of all. Understand that you've only played a half. You don't win a game or lose a game in a half. You can put yourself in a tough spot. But if you keep playing and do what you're supposed to do, don't try to do anything extra. Just do what you do. And trust it'll be good enough. Yes, you have to. You put in the work. Trust your work ethic. You talk about how this team really scout and report defense. They've had a tough time defending this UTA team tonight. Second opportunity too strong from Smith. And the point guard, Emily Ryan, says, let me have it. Let's figure out where we want to go. And in this case, <laughs> she's going to go there herself. Yeah, the, 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 the misconception people get sometimes about Iowa State, you know, to talk about all the threes, but they have so many people that have learned to drive it to the basket. Um, Zanarski does it, Ryan does it, uh, Ashley Jones does it. You know, they, they, they make you play inside out, and all of a sudden now those three-point shooters get open after those drives. talked earlier about how this team has used their 
ousting from the NCAA tournament last year. They lost in the second round against Texas A&M in overtime. 84-82 was a score. Another empty trip. Very uncharacteristic for this team. But that score was on the scoreboard in their practice facility all summer long. They had a message written on the back of their shirts that said, remember the Alamo because they wanted to come back and have a better showing in the NCAA tournament and especially now getting the chance to do it here on their home floor. And sometimes it's a mental hurdle you have to get over too. Uh, when you know you've lost, you're nervous, it's your first round game. Um, you can't assume that your home crowd's going to get you through it. It helps, but, you know, the crowd doesn't score a single basket for you. <laughs> Chastain to the bench for Sharika Wright. You see Arlington Lady Mavs, three fouls for Chastain, senior guard. Jones wants it back. She'll get it. And she'll make it. She's just clever around the basket. She knows how to get leverage on defenders. And it'll be interesting to see if UTA decides to double her a little bit later on. Cyclones four for five in this quarter to make it a one-point game. Jacobs, a lot of control. Iowa State have the chance to take the lead for the first time since the scoreboard said six to five. Jones wants it. One of the easier looks she'll probably get as the defender fell down, but she can't finish. Goes off of Arlington leg to get it back. It'll be interesting uh, in, in the game that uh, Iowa State lost to Texas in the conference tournament. I, uh, Texas started sending an extra defender uh, for when Jones spun to see if they could take her out of some of that. Foul by Donarski, her second. Jacobs just went the length of the floor that time and decided you're going to have to make a defensive play. You know, takes it off the boards, just goes, creates the contact, and they got basically Donarski for putting her arms out. They weren't straight up. You know, you mentioned that loss to Texas by Iowa State. That was in overtime in the semifinals of the Big 12 tournament. And looking at their record, Iowa State's only lost six games all year. They come in here with a 26 and six record. Five of their losses have come to teams in the state of Texas. Now, of course, three of those have been Texas, two of them Baylor. You can tell all ranked except for that one loss at LSU. And now here they are getting a tough game from another team from Texas. Yeah, they'll, they'll avoid that, the, that Texas uh, trip as often as you can right now. Ryan Jones stepped back for the three, but was defended well. Ryan with five to shoot. Couldn't quite kiss it over the front of the rim. Crowd wanting defense, Jacob. She's got to drive. slow herself down a little bit. She's trying so Ooh. hard to do things. She may be hurt. And really late behind the play. Or and tired. Struggling, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Has been a lot of up and down, and she averages over 30 minutes per game. She's looking at the bench for a sub. And she will head over and get a little rest. You can tell labored walk to the bench as Chastain comes back in. Well, Jacobs is trying to make things happen for her team, but but going straight at the basket, under, out of control a little bit. And Dew has length to bother her. Dew gets it on the inside now for Iowa State and is fouled. Shia Smith can't believe it, but foul was called on the play. So nine year due, sophomore transfer from Butler. Will step up to the free throw line. This has been a bad theme for Iowa State tonight, the missed free throws. They are six for 13 and a team that is second in the country in free throw percentage on the season at nearly 83%. You just wonder a little bit if it's the nerves of the game and getting overhyped for things. 
Long time to wait, too. Everybody we talked to for this late game. It's yep. tough when you want to get going right off the bat and you have to wait. Most of these players would have been ready to play at 10 a.m. <laughs> we would have been ready. Ryan had it blocked. Two-point game. Cyclones trying to get back out in front, but UT Arlington still with the lead. Ah, March Madness, isn't it grand? Joni Taylor and her Lady Bulldogs from the University of Georgia. No, they are through. They're playing on Sunday here in Ames, Iowa. Who are they going to face? Will it be Iowa State or UT Arlington? They're keeping a very close eye on this one, as you might imagine. Maybe giving the players a little rest. Coaches got it handled. Just got to scout it, get ready for tomorrow morning. It comes quickly. And in tournament time, you got to be ready to play right away. Georgia picking up a win earlier tonight against the 11 seed, the Dayton Fires, who had a very strong performance in a first four game on Wednesday. And there's a little bit of a delay right now because Star Jacobs. There's a rule that you have to report by a certain time going to the timeouts, and she wasn't there at the table. She was on the bench. I don't particularly like the rule, but I don't make it. <laughs> and you still have to follow them, like them or not. So she'll have to wait to come back on the floor. She sits crouched at the scorer's table, ready to come in. Do reach the high for that ball. Stays with Iowa State. She's frustrated not to have made it. It's a great job even on the catch. Now Jacobs back on the floor. Seems to be moving a little better. shoot. Ryan to the corner. Shot is up. Shot is good. What's ironic about that play is the play was originally set up for Ashley Jones to get a post up. They couldn't get it into her. So she just ran out to the corner and waited till the ball came back around her. Ten points in the game for the All-American for Iowa State and the lead. First time since it was six to five. Star Jacobs, there's a foul. It's offensive. It's her third. I think that's a good call. She lowered her shoulder. Defender was waiting. Tried to make she tried to make her drip or pass one dribble too late. That's an offensive foul. Jones doing it on both ends of the floor. As a double-double opens up some space there for Ryan on the drive. 17th double-double of the season for Ashley Jones, 48th of her career, and she continues to climb the all-time scoring charts in the Big 12. And Donarski just about had it, had her hands on the basketball for a moment. Shot clock at 10. Benjamin gets the glass to work in her favor. Nice little floater in the lane. Avoided the charge. UTA back out in front by one. Ryan scribbling around looking for options. Wants to get it to number 24. And Ashley Jones crossed over to her right hand. Just left it a little soft. On the final touch. Milton. Better get back. Here comes Donarski, beats everybody down the floor. That's a really bad decision by Shia Smith, who had a chance to get back and hesitated at midcourt. Get back and protect the basket. And that hesitation was all the opening that Donarski needed. Jacobs has to be careful playing with three fouls. 
She's been the go-to option for UTA all season long. And when you ask who that is for Iowa State, well, it's Ashley Jones. Got a little help from her younger sister, Aubrey, that time. I think the ball was off Iowa State on that play. Uh, Star Should have asked for help from the other officials. Star Jacobs would agree, yeah, because they can't, as you know, cannot review that at this point in the game, but they could ask the other officials there's if somebody the, had a better look. A look. It looks like it goes off the leg. Yeah, I would have called that UTA ball. But they get it back. Yeah, works out in their favor anyway. Now they need to try to find some offense. Lady Mavs have missed seven of the last eight shots in this quarter. They're trying to get some of the rhythm back with this Princeton set right now. They were playing too much one-on-one. -on -one. They wanted to go back door, and Ryan was having none of it. Now she's got the ball in her hands behind the back. Aubrey Jones. Do sky high for the rebound, but it taps out into the hands of Star Jacobs, and things getting a little wild, wild west out there. Come out on the floor. One point game in Ames, Iowa. We've got a good one here in Hilton. The lead bouncing back and forth in the third quarter, much to the delight of this Iowa State fan group that is here. A lot of them in Hilton, and they're loving what Ashley Jones can do. She's outscored UTA by herself this quarter. Well, she's done it everywhere. Whatever frustration she may have had in the first half, she's eliminated right now. She scored from the three. She scored in the post. She's gone off balance shots off the board. She's done it all in this third quarter. See how UTA comes out of their timeout. Remember, they shot the three so very well in the first half. But they've gone a bit cold overall in this third quarter. UTA five for seven from three in the first half, just three for 12. While meanwhile, Ashley Jones has continued to heat up for Iowa State. Yeah, I mean, she scored, she's rebounded, she's played good defense. She draws a lot of defensive attention, doesn't she? Yes, yeah, she does. You see an example there. Just by her being on the side of the floor, they don't leave her. Iowa State's got all their three-point shooters spread around, so Emily Ryan just has a clear driving lane to the basket with no help. I'm not sure UTA's defenders are sure what they need to do when the point guard is driving. They've loaded up so much on Donarski and Ashley Jones that when they're on the perimeter, there's space for the rest of the Iowa State players. Emily Ryan, no problem on the free throw, and Iowa State up by four. That's a good call, great screen. I think it was by Milton on the screen to try to get Jacobs or Benjamin to the block, and the defender just ran through the screen. Yeah, it was due, her third foul. Quick play off the inbounds, though, and well executed by Benjamin. Two-point game. Under a minute to play in our third quarter. The champions from the Sun Belt given Iowa State all they can handle and then some to this point, but the Cyclones maybe have started to find a rhythm. There's the same drive. They all take turns. Ashley Jones, then it's Ryan. Then it's Donarski, then it's Ashley Jones. <laughs> UTA, you better figure out how to defend it. Especially if she gets going to a right like this. She's, a, she's got acrobatic shots when she goes to her right hand. If you're going to give up drives on her, you might be better off pushing her to her left a little bit. And that was the fourth foul committed by Claire Chastain. I think we're also going to have a, a look at this. Uh, Jones might have caught the defender with her elbow uh, up in the neck or face area on this play. Previous plays under further review. Here's the drive. Extends her, right yeah, right, right in the chin or side of the face. Um, she may get called for that. Now 
Kevin, is it a, is it a natural basketball play type of motion? Do you? Think? I'm going to say they say no. I think this is going to get called against Jones. Because right, she, she's using it to get herself a little space right yep. there, isn't she? Yep, she gets her right in the middle of the face. Well, Jones has had an absolutely incredible third quarter. As we just showed you her numbers a few minutes ago, outscoring UTA by herself since halftime. Had 10 points before this basket. It'll be interesting. I Again, I'm not an official, but I do feel like she gained an advantage by doing that. And it's a it's an elbow above the above the shoulders. Well, we'll see what the officials have to say. In a minute, <laughs> when it's our turn. After review, foul was on number 20, Blue. Incidental contact as the second part of that play. So well, they, they called on the they they feel it was on the defense first. The rest was incidental. So Two the shots. Basket counts. Yeah, basket counts. And then Jones on the free throw line. Coach Wright for UTA not agreeing with the call. And with that free throw, Jones now number six all time in the Big 12 in scoring. Jacobs with her left. Good. That was a quick first step. Long first step and a quick first step. A lot more under control than some of her last attempts. A long three. A little too long in the end for Ryan. But it is a three-point Iowa State lead. We've got one quarter left to play. Who's going to move on to the next round here at Ames? UT Arlington has had a double-digit lead in this game, but in the third quarter, the Cyclones say no more. Iowa State leads it. Can they hang on? We've got 10 to play from Hilton. Complete coverage of the NCAA Women's Championship on the ESPN Family of Networks continues all through the weekend and then looking ahead March 25th through 28th with the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight. The Final Four is Friday, April 1st, and we crown a champion on Sunday, April 3rd. What a battle we have between these two teams. The three-seed Iowa State getting a little wind in their sails in that third quarter to take a three-point lead. As UT Arlington looking to make a little history. If they can hang on and pull the upset, get their first ever NCAA tournament win. <laughs> Iowa State outscoring UTA in the third quarter. Star Jacobs, when you need a bucket, that's who you go to. Great up, up fake and step through. Got the defender going the wrong way. 16 points for Jacobs to lead the Lady Mavs. This is Maggie Espen Miller McGraw, junior off the bench for Iowa State. This is a play that has given UTA a lot of trouble, but Ryan can't finish. The shot from Farrell is good. <laughs> I'm, I'm just laughing at all the preparation you do for a team, and, and a team just destroys the scouting report. Well, UT Arlington averages four made three-pointers per game as Ashley Jones leaves her layup just a little bit short. They are six for nine in this game from three. And now with a two-point lead, ninth lead change of the game what you want. This is March Madness, baby. Back to the same spot she had it before. Just lost her balance. Went too quick again. Still nearly made yep. something of it, even going down to the floor. Ashley Jones. So calm. Back and forth she goes. Gets the foul committed 
by UTA, Shia Smith second. Ashley Jones, this is what she does, backs down, backs down, waits till you make a mistake, and then makes you pay for it. Gets you up in the air, step through, reach in. Gotta resist. 27 points in the game for Jones. This is the third career game in the NCAA tournament. She's gone over 20 points. Had a couple of 30-point performances in 2021 when the Cyclones lost in the second round to Texas A&M in overtime. And now we are tied. Jacobs smothered. Goes out to Benjamin for a three. You got it. Well, that was good patience by Jacobs because the last couple times she's tried to force those. They've had a couple big threes because she's been willing to pass out to the corners. Jones had an opening. Thought she could get her shot off. She did. And then on the rebound, it's a tie up. It'll stay with Iowa State. Aubrey Jones in the game with her big sister. As is Morgan Kane, who gets the ball off the inbounds, hands it off to Ashley. All-time leading scorer for the Cyclones going to work. She had a little more length to go over somebody that time when Jacobs was the defender. Farrell. And another tie-up on the rebound. I mean, both teams really going all out when there's a rebound to be had. As you would expect, game on the line, fourth quarter in the NCAA tournament. Uh, no, no time to take any possessions off. <laughs> As if your season depended on it. When, in fact, this time it actually does. Katie, big cat Farrell, senior guard, passes over to Benjamin, who's hit a couple of big shots. Jacobs, Jones defending. Jones on the left-hand side, goes back over to her right. She's over 30, 31 in the game now for Ashley Jones. When you're playing Ashley Jones in games like this, you're basically playing like when you were kids, one-on-one -on -one where there was no limit on the number of dribbles you could take. <laughs> Well, she's patient enough to, to wear you down. One point lead for UT Arlington. Benjamin misses. Chance for Iowa State to go back out in front. Farrell just a little notice that she's there. That shot well short. And out of bounds on Iowa State goes back to the Lady Mavericks. Can you talk about Jones and all those moves? that she makes. I mean, that basketball playing family, Jonesy's Restaurant that her family owns in Iowa City. The tales there about that it's famous for two things. It's tenderloin and it's basketball because the girls all worked there for their parents. They were always playing basketball, dribbling around, showing off their moves. And we've got a... It's a very competitive group. Our family, of course, going to come and watch. Again, a shot clock didn't start here. So that's the reason for our delay. Imagine there's some nerves amongst these. Yeah, so over 5,500 in attendance. Great crowd showed up tonight, as you would expect, as they usually do here in Ames. Chastain has to be careful, playing with four fouls. Spins and is in. That was a very confident play. She knew she had a smaller defender on her that if she could get inside the five, six foot area that she could shoot over the defender. Ryan, step back, wide open, drains it. There's a rule when you play against Iowa State. Do not go under the screen on shooters. Tie game once again. for how much longer. That's off the side of the backboard. That's not going to change things. Yeah. 
Good job by Benjamin right there denying Asher Jones the ball in the post. Aubrey Jones. They got a mismatch inside, but they just couldn't get it inside. Kane was open. Four on the shot clock for Ryan. Goes with a right hand. Makes it just like she planned it. Cyclones out in front. I was going to say the crowd comes to their feet, but they've been on their feet for most of the game. They seem to get the loudest on defense, too, making it tough for UT Arlington. And Star Jacobs, she is fouled as she drives. 16 points in the game for Jacobs. And we have a game. I hope you stayed up late for this one. Don't go anywhere. Two-point game, 434 left to play in Ames. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? NCAA Women's Basketball giving you some great games already. We are playing in the Greensboro region where South Carolina is the one seed. Iowa the two seed, both of those teams through. We know it's Iowa Creighton. We know Georgia the six seed awaiting the winner of this matchup. Will the three seed also advance? We'll have to wait and see. Iowa State with a two-point lead, and Jacobs misses the first free throw. Cyclones this season have come back twice from 11-point deficits to win. They trailed by 12 in the first half in this one. UTA in a press right here, trapping in the backcourt. Got a set play coming from the timeout here. Lexi Donarski. Katie Farrell keeps it in her hands. Contested shot, and it goes back into the hands of Iowa State. Great move to get to the basket. Looked like it was going to go down. Emma Ryan went on a little five-point run of her own earlier in this quarter. And now there is a foul called. It's on Shia Smith, her third. Second team foul. Iowa State with just one team foul in the quarter. And that's two, as I mentioned, on UT Arlington. Tough position here. Chastain's got four fouls, and she's the one guarding Ashley Jones. Going to need some help defensively. from Jacobs, and will get us a shot clock reset back to 20. I appreciate that the crowd just did a little ole, ole, ole <laughs> soccer cheer after that. They've been a great crowd all night long, really giving you that wonderful March Madness type of feel. Six to shoot. They get the ball away from those long legs of Star Jacobs. Of course, that gives another fresh 20 to the Cyclones. Ashley Jones going against Jacobs. The two stars facing off. And Star Jacobs frustrated that the elbow that was not called earlier on Ashley Jones didn't get called this time either. And instead, it's the fourth personal on Jacobs. This is Ashley Jones doing what she does. She's driving the lane. She gets the spin. Pretty good defense right there. But then Star, at the very last second, comes down with her right arm. 
It's a very similar play, though, really, to the one that they looked at <laughs> earlier. And actually, I think it was Chastain defending on it the last time that it happened. Certain players get a reputation of being able to get shots off, and officials, you know, look more at the defender. 67-65, Iowa State out in front. Inside, good hands, good finish by no, Smith. No, but they called it off, though. They called it on the pass. Oh, it was a foul that a may great work pass, out in the great, favor yeah. of Iowa State, as that was a good connection, as you said. Bucket won't count. On the nice pick and roll here, grab. Looks like Ryan grabs it right around the waist. So UTA will have to try again. Chastain for three, and the lead is short. Ryan, again. You all day long, what she wanted to do. Don't go under. <laughs> well, the coach is coming out now. I hear it. I mean, I saw, I saw the scouting report that, that UTA did yesterday. And they were telling these kids, do not go under on their three-point shooters. And the two defenders just looked at each other. I think the one defender thought the other was going to switch. And there was no switch. Wide open three. Second time in the last couple minutes. There's Ryan. The two defenders, they run. They look at each other like, well, are you going to take it or am I? And Ryan says, thank you. Yeah. She says, you're going to give me that much space? That is money in the bank. And she has eight of Iowa State's last nine points. Now Two of them are on the same you. play. Yeah. Well, this is a huge possession right now for UTA coming out of this timeout. They only have one timeout left. They had to burn it to try to calm themselves down and get a good play. But they got to score quickly here uh, and get back and play defense. Well, that three by Emily Ryan now gives Iowa State a five-point lead. That matches their largest lead of the game. 2.30 left to play. The 14 seed UTA Lady Mavericks had a 12 point lead in the first half. But have found the going getting a little tougher here in the second half, late night in Hilton Coliseum. That's a tough basket though, and it rolls around and in. And it wasn't the original play. They were trying to get Star Jacobs on the block. Well defended early on by Iowa State. Taryn Milton, the senior, bringing her team within three. So we're back to the same play. Let's see how they play it this time. There's the switch. Jones. Yeah, you got it! You cheat, you pay. Tried to go over on that screen and cheat on the top, and she's wide open in the corner. Iowa State might have started a little cold from three, but they have really heated up here in the fourth. UTA is not going to stop, though. Shia Smith, this time it does count. And timeout called by Sharika Wright. That's their last timeout. So that's huge, considering it's a four-point game, and now UTA out of timeouts as we go down the stretch. Yeah, I mean... Well, Ashley Jones, you know, when you're the star and all the pressure's on you and you're the leader of your team, can you step up in big situations? She's done it. She's got shots everywhere, inside, outside. She's got an offensive rebounds. Gets to the free throw line. And then the three, the, the, the deadly dagger. <laughs> That Defender was... tried to go over the screen, and she reads it. I thought one thing about Iowa State players, too, is they know how to read screens. They spend a lot of time, or, or am I being chased? Is somebody going through? Is somebody going over? Are they switching? They, they practice that constantly, and she's really great at reading that. Practice pays off as Ashley Jones and her performance are Capital One rewarding performance tonight. So no timeouts left for UT Arlington. Four for Iowa State. The Cyclones 
have two team fouls. UTA has three. Four-point lead, Iowa State. The winner of this one moving on to Sunday and a date with the sixth seed Georgia Lady Bulldogs. Here's the trap. Good patience by Donarski to bring it back out. Use the clock. You just would never think Donarski and Ryan are sophomores, the way that these two play. They're just basketball junkies, been well coached their whole life. Well, that time, the three wasn't there, but the drive was. And then it was out of bounds. Things unraveling in the final moments here for UT Arlington. And now UTA's got to be forced to foul. Against the second best free throw shooting team in the country. However, one that has not lived up to its free throw standards tonight. Just three fouls. Wasted too much time right there. If you're going to foul, if you're not going to play it out, foul right away. Or trap. Do something to speed it up. The next foul will put Iowa State on the free throw line. UTA playing way too soft out here. They can get it in much too easy. Time taken away. Farrell once again finally comes to commit the foul. Tonight, Iowa State just 12 for 20 on the free throw line. 60% for a team that usually shoots it. I think they're at 82%. Uh, 80, yeah, yeah 82.6 on the season. Second best in the country. Ryan, 19 points in the game. That's I can, I can guarantee you what Iowa State's going to do at practice tomorrow if they win this game. <laughs> you think they're going to shoot some free throws? I think throws? they're going to shoot some free throws. <laughs> well, they'd like to have that opportunity because that means they're moving on. Is there more to be said from UT Arlington? This 14 seed that came in here with so much energy, so much fight. Timeout called by Iowa State. They're sensing the end is near. And liking the way that scoreboard looks right about now. It took, it took a lot to get there tonight. They had to play at a high level to win this game, and they've done that. I mean, we talked early on, you know, how do you get back in it when you're feeling that way? You've got to be patient. You've got to trust what you do is the right thing to do. And they have done that the entire second half. Their best players have made the best plays. Trying to take their team through to that date with Georgia on Sunday. On the other part of the bracket, Iowa and Creighton will match up. And I think a lot of fans in the state of Iowa salivating about a potential rematch. But if Iowa State wants that, they got to win tonight and then they got to get through Johnny Taylor's Bulldogs. Interesting formation to get the ball in. What did you, what, what made it interesting What to they you? did is they spread the entire court. Instead of putting everybody in that area where the inbounder was, there were two people in the backcourt, one down toward the corner, and then Asher Jones ran up from the corner while the other the player vacated the area. Much easier way to get her the ball. 35 points in the game tonight for Jones and some emotion as Claire Chastain, the senior guard for UTA, goes off the floor with her fifth foul. And there's Chastain, and what a game. She had some huge shots in this one, especially early on. Jones with 36 after the bad start of the game. Farrell's also had some big baskets. I mean, I think you cannot come away without being really impressed. Star Jacobs has been the go-to player all season long. She has made some tough shots. She has 17 points in the game. But in the end, as you said, Iowa State did not panic when the game was not going the way they wanted, and they were down double digits in the first half. And 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 I give UTA a ton of credit. I mean, they've they've been very poised until the very end here. Um, they're, they're not as experienced uh, at these kinds of games, these big games. Um, but, but they came in with an attitude that they could win, and they played like it. Timeout called 
on the rebound there as there are plenty of them left for Iowa State. Six point lead for the Cyclones. They have the basketball. Everybody together on their side of the huddle is Sharika Wright. We'll take this opportunity to talk to her team. I mean, the only chance that they have right now is they have to steal this inbounds play. Um, it's very tough to do. If you don't, when you're fouling, you're putting, putting free throw shooters on the line to end the game. UT Arlington was in search of its first ever NCAA tournament win. This is just their third ever appearance as a program, but I think you look at what this group did winning the Sun Belt this year for the first time. They're about to leave that conference, but they win the tournament. Sharika Wright, bright, bright future for what she can do with this team and this program. Jacobs a hard foul there. Crowd didn't like it. That'll be it for Jacobs too. She's done. Good sportsmanship by Jacobs. You know, you had to you had to dive to try to get that foul. She wasn't trying to hurt anybody. It's just a frustrating finish to the game. 19 points for the Sun Belt player of the Previous year. Previous plays under further review. And they'll probably look good. Not probably. They are looking they are back looking on at that it. foul. And emotional moments here on the sideline for UTA is their dream slipping away from them. Well, they fulfilled their first dream. They got here. Yep. They upset Troy to get here. Here's the foul. Fouls on number four. Incident contact. Knocked her to the floor. So she's, just, she's making an effort at the ball. Trying to get the ball. Gets the arm. And certainly nothing for her to hang her head about. And the junior just... Her first season with UTA. Excited to see what she may be able to do. Looking forward, but I know none of those players are ready to think about that just yet. I'll be interested to see, you know, Georgia sitting here watching this, what kind of game plan they will come for with Iowa State. They have a different kind of team. They have more size than UTA has, and they have very, very quick defensive guards. So how they guard Jones and Ryan might be a little different than what we saw tonight. Georgia 3-0 all-time against Iowa State. They last met in the second round of the 2013 NCAA tournament. So it's been a while. And the crowd is ready to celebrate. They stayed up late. They earned this one. And so, too, did the Cyclones. 78-71, Iowa State moving on to Sunday. Well, this was fun. You know, early rounds of the tournament, you're not sure what kind of games you're going to get. Sometimes you get blowouts. We've had we've had one of those in the in the first four, but tonight we got a basketball game. It was well played by both teams. Uh, the favorite had pressure put on them, and they responded. Fun to watch. I enjoyed every bit of it tonight, and it'll be fun to see what happens when you get these two great teams in Iowa State and Georgia on Sunday. Absolutely. Admirable performance from UT Arlington. Just could not find a way to finish it out as Iowa State held on on their home floor, picked up their 27th win of the season, which, by the way, is a program record. We're talking about a lot of records this week yeah. for different people. <laughs> Individual records, team records. And there is one record-setting player making her way over to us right now. The all-time leading scorer for the Iowa State Cyclones, Ashley Jones, joining us now as she gets settled. Maybe let her catch her breath a little bit. I think she's looking all right, though. <laughs> Ashley, can you hear us okay? You yes, us? I can. All right, congratulations. Thank can you. you just take us through, especially the way this game started, not really what you guys were accustomed to, a little slow, especially with the threes going in. Yeah, I mean, uh, UT Arlington did a great job to begin the game. We just had to get in the flow of the game and start knocking down some shots. And once we did that, we were fine. Uh, I think our defense uh, was a big key uh, down the stretch, especially. So what do you think Coach Finley is going to be doing early in practice with you guys tomorrow? 
Ah, uh, free throw. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, those were not the best. <laughs> uh, it was your group. It just kind of, everybody kind of had one of those nights tonight. Uh, you guys are such a great, I, I said on the air, I thought that, you know, you guys showed composure tonight because when you come out in a first game of a, of a tournament and a team jumps on you right away, do you have the patience to stay with what, what you guys do best? And it seemed that you did from top to bottom of your team. Yeah, I mean, you can't get too far ahead of yourself. The game's a, it's a long game. So uh, do you just know you have enough time? You can get back in it, just uh, start making some plays, get some stops. And I think we did that, and that kind of helped out down the stretch. Speaking of helping out, I know you're spoiled. You get to play in this all the time, Ashley. But can you just talk about what it meant for you guys to have earned the right to play here in your home floor and then how that helped get you through this game? Yeah, I mean, we have the best fans in the nation. I'm, I mean, I don't know who want, want to play here. It's a lot of fun. So uh, just we've had a really great season, and I think that's a tribute to our fans as well. I mean, they've helped us out through, along the way. and. Uh, to be able to reward them with getting the opportunity to play here again, and especially on such a big stage and having our fans, uh, it's a lot of fun. Well, you get one more. Get I mean, one more. We yeah. will see you on Sunday. See you there. <laughs> Thank All you. right, Ashley Jones and the Iowa State Cyclones moving on to Sunday and a day with the sixth-seeded Georgia Lady Bulldogs. I hope everybody got to stay up and experience this with us tonight. What a basketball game. March Madness at its finest. The 14 seed UT Arlington fought all the way, but in the end, the Iowa State Cyclones hang on and advance as we say goodnight from Ames.